gentlemen, the where are we? Casino New Brunswick in Moncton, Canada. It's come to that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking kill myself. It's proud to present an evening of comedy and comedy with Mr. Johnny Gardhouse, but um, Miss Joan Rivers, but um, Sean Graham and the NB Power Sale Orchestra, but um. Ladies and gentlemen, the best opening act in his price range, Mr. Johnny Gardhouse. <laughs> Fantastic. How about a hand for that band? They're tight, huh? And by tight, I mean drunk. Okay. Well, this is fantastic. I've actually been here for a couple days uh, checking out your lovely city. I've seen all the beautiful tourist things like uh, uh, Magnetic Hill. <laughs> That's uh, interesting. By the way, do you guys ever take people from out of town and don't tell them where you're going, just take them to Magnetic Hill and then like just park the car and then as it rolls back uphill, go, what's happening? The car's possessed. I also saw the title bore. That's an appropriate name for that. I love how my tour guide took me down. And the way he set it up it was like a hundred foot wall of water was gonna come flying down the river. And then it got there. Next time I'm just gonna stay in my room and play with the tub. I've had a lot of fun here at the casino as well. I, I tell you, it's a little different from uh, what I'm used to when it comes to casinos. I, uh, I go to Vegas quite a bit, and I like going there. It's, uh, although Vegas is a lot different than what we're used to here in Canada, especially the party rules we've been taught growing up here in Canada. Like, this is my favorite one in Vegas. You can drink anywhere, anywhere in the city of Las Vegas. And that doesn't impress you people at all. You're all looking at me like, this is Moncton. We call that Tuesday. Oh, there he is right there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, um, <laughs> this just never happens here. Again. Like, when I first got, my very first time in Vegas, I was uh, a young buck. I was 22 years old with a bunch of buddies. We get to Vegas, we drop our bags in the room, and our plan was just go party up and down the strip. Mm -hmm. My friends had gotten in the cabin. I got stopped dead in my tracks in the lobby of the MGM Grand there in Vegas because there was a giant slot machine. This is a true story. Giant slot machine, and for a quarter, you could win a million bucks. Right? So I figured, why not? I put a quarter in, I pulled the handle like an idiot. Uh, it's a giant machine, I could have pushed a button, but I pulled the giant handle. Thought it would help me win. Nothing, clack, 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 screw you. So I turned away dejected to go join my friends outside in the cab, and this waitress appears with a bottle of beer. Here's your beer, and I said, oh, I didn't order that. And she said, oh, no, no, if you're gambling, it's free. And I said, tell me more. She said, free, and I just grabbed it and started pounding it because I wanted to go join my friends outside. They were in a cab yelling, let's go, and I'm like, free! I'm not just going to put it down and walk outside. You know, I, I, I want to finish it, it's free. So I'm trying to down it before I walk out the door, something that we're all used to doing here in Canada. And I'm pounding it, and this cop standing next to me goes, no, 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 go. I said, excuse me, no, no, you can take your liquor outside. And as a Canadian, all I could say back was, hey, man, that's called entrapment. <laughs> I've seen law and order, you jerk. I want a lawyer. <laughs> so he explains a lot of me. So I run out. I jump in the front seat of the cab with a full bottle of beer, look at my buddies in the back, and go, let's go party. And they're like, what are you doing? It's the law. <laughs> and this is how our Canadian brains function. We hear the law, you can drink anywhere in the, in the city. So what do we do the next day? We don't go to another casino, strip bar, pool. No, 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 no. We grabbed a two-four and sat on the curb outside our hotel <laughs> and played this game for three hours. Cop! Woo! <laughs> but here we are. We live in Canada. That's our gig. That's what we do. We're kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Title boring, I guess. Even our politicians aren't even that flashy, huh? Like our new leader now, the fabulous Mr. Harper. Hmm? 
You guys got quiet like he's here. <laughs> he is boring. He's a boring guy. He doesn't like talking to us, doesn't like answering questions. That's why I personally, I miss Chrétien. He was exciting in a carnival weirdo type way. It's kind of like if Popeye and Flipper had a baby. <laughs> what I miss most about Jean Chrétien is the press conferences, right? Because Harper, he doesn't talk to us. He doesn't answer questions. I miss Chrétien's press conferences because he spoke to us, even though we didn't know what the hell he was talking about. The simplest question for him would turn it, like his answer would be like a secret code that he tossed back out. You know, Mr. Kretchen, do you think Canada will be involved in a post-war Iraq? Well, you know, that guy with the red hat has no bicycle. <laughs> we're, we're all getting hats? Now, now there's terror. We have terror in Canada. Uh, nothing to be afraid of. Don't, don't be afraid. They caught them. Um, but I'm going to say this. You know, Harper, they wanted to go get him. They wanted to whack him. Holy cow. Joel was laughing his head off about that. Chrétien. Because remember how they tried to whack Chrétien? With a pie. <laughs> it's a true story. A guy pie, got close enough to pie our then leader. And the best part about Canada, he waited in line. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Just standing there in the crowd. <laughs> no pushing, no pushing. I came early for a reason, pal. And only in Canada, they didn't catch him right away. All we saw on CBC was gunk and then... Two Mounties over in the corner. Holy cow, look at him go, eh? Oh, he's got running shoes. Get the car. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> Even if our crazy people had the guns, I don't think it would still work. <laughs> no. Can you imagine some guy up on Parliament Hill opening up on the Parliament building saying, play him, play him, play him. Two of them highly trained Mounties over in the corner. Just go, he's on that, huh? That's not good. We should stop this guy. He's <laughs> not looky. Hey! They're in that building. Stupid English. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know it. That's, that's the only French I know, by the way. The only other French I know is... <laughs> That has got me into so much trouble. I was in Montreal last week. Some guy started yelling at me. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. Just want to have fun. Hey, the government hacks on us all the time, taxing us like crazy. But you still want to have fun, don't you? Don't have a good, okay, do, do you? The rest of you are looking at me like I'm the ugliest stripper you've ever seen. All I know is, uh, here's something fun. This is a great way to kill an afternoon. It only costs you a couple bucks, and it's a great way to stick it to the man. Here's what you do. You go into Service New Brunswick. Do you already take your driving test to get your driver's license? Go in there, use a fake name, and retake your driving test. Because you can do everything you ever wanted to do while taking that test. Just mess with that dude's head. You know the guy from the Service New Brunswick that, that sits with a clipboard and marks you off? You know what I mean? He, he controls your driving. So everything comes, like when you're leaving the parking lot, he's going to say something like, okay, left turn here, please. And then you say, no! <laughs> and this, the, the, the tick is very important because pe people don't know how to react to that. And then when you leave the parking lot, you leave like Dukes of Hazard meets 18. You know what I'm saying? The wheels should be spinning smoke. And then you peel out of the driveway and go right. And as, oh yeah, and as you're hauling ass down the road, just every once in a while look in the empty backseat of your car and go, shut the hell up! <laughs> then take them out in the highway for the highway portion of the test, right? And as soon as you get on like the on-ramp, just floor it. 
right? Pin it for Halifax and go. You know what that uncomfortable speed where the car does they, 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 that thing? And every once in a while, he'll get angry. He'll be like, slow down, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Just give him one of these. Rawr, 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 rawr. You don't care about him. Nuts to him. You want to wait for the cop, get pulled over because you're speeding like an idiot, have that cop come up to the window and give you the spiel, you know, like, yeah, can I see your license registration, please? <laughs> it's up to him, really. <laughs> what is it you said again? Oh, said you'd never catch us. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's uh, drinking tonight. I, uh, I, um, I've, I've, I've been drinking all day. The, um, if you're drinking tonight and you, you plan on getting a little uh, pie-eyed, as I call it, uh, and I don't mean actually putting pie in your eyes. That's, that's dangerous. The sugar could, could cut. But here's what you do. If you feel like getting a little hammered tonight, here's what you do. It's a great hangover cure. It's fun. Okay? So tomorrow morning, get up all crusty and weird. Mm -hmm. uh, go uh, get a couple cases of beer. <laughs> you guys are like, that is a regular uh, uh, Sunday. A couple cases of beer, then go get a couple 60-pounders of, of liquor. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you what to buy. Then go home and drink it all. Mm -hmm. So you can barely walk or talk. Then dress up like a commercial airline pilot and go hang out at the airport. <laughs> then wander around the airport and talk to people. <laughs> hey, where are you folks going? Miami, no way, us too. A small world, give me a hug for luck. <laughs> watch it. I've been watching a lot of, a lot of TV. I, you know, I, I tell you, I don't watch too much TV anymore because I'm not a big fan of reality TV, but I, I, the only reality TV that I watch is, uh, is CNN. I'm a big fan of the CNN network. Not because not I tune in for news, just for the comedy. And... Um, I, I just, it drives me nuts how they just blow everything out of proportion. Like, you can watch CBC, and, like, the biggest disaster could happen. They're like, hmm, that's pretty crazy. CNN goes bananas, don't they? This is my favorite one. Uh, two years ago, they had a big storm down in the southern United States, right? And this is what they called the storm. Storm of the century. Here in Moncton, that same storm would be called a light flurry. Your local paper would read, happy storm, drifts through town. <laughs> Locals plan parade. <laughs> it was amazing, too, watching this. They're showing downtown Atlanta, right? And these people are not used to what we're, like, black ice. We're all, I, by the way, I heard all, I know you guys are ready for the black ice, because I heard cars driving the casino. Clickety-clackety-clickety-clackety-clickety-clackety-clickety-clack. I thought we were being overrun by the Amish. They showed downtown Atlanta during the storm of the century, and it was amazing to watch these uh, Southern Americans drive around the black ice, something we totally take for granted. They're just like, oh my God, I can't control the cars! Yeehaw! <laughs> They're slamming into poles and cars and ditches. It was unreal to watch, but then every once in a while, you see this like one car, like a station wagon, just. <laughs> it's Canadian tourists. Some, some crazy bastard from Oromukto, you know what I mean? <laughs> Take off the snow tires. Oh, no! No, we rule this city now. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, my wife is a big reality TV show fan. That's her thing. She loves reality television, you know what I mean? And I just can't wrap my head around it at all, you know what I mean? It's just so, so foreign to me. That's why, again, I, I like watching the news. And then I make my own fun and do stuff like that. Like, I spend all my time on the road, you know what I'm saying? And so, I mean, here I am in, in Moncton today. Uh, last week, I was in, uh, oh, God, where was I? In Alberta? Not just a town, Alberta. We just drive. That's all we do, drive. And it's much like where I grew up in Northern Ontario, it's much like here in New Brunswick, isn't it, right? Like, like, our wildlife is pretty much the same. You know what I mean? We have deer and moose, right? You're, you're looking at me like, oh, I've never heard of these magical creatures. <laughs> oh, we got them. And you have the same kind of road signs that we have in Ontario, you know what I mean? Our tiny little sign with the deer kind of gliding across the road. <laughs> kind of looks like two of his buddies threw him from the ditch, you know what I mean? Go, Gary, go! <laughs> but 
when I got out to Alberta, man, I don't know, th their signs are not like that. They're not cute. Like the farther you go north in Alberta, the bigger and scarier the signs get. Like I was up near a place called Slave Lake, Alberta, and I'll tell you, the sign was about the size of a billboard with a picture of a big mutant buck deer holding, I think it was a Cadillac over his head. Just like, And, and the best part is the deer and moose and elk in Alberta, like here, like here in New Brunswick, much like Ontario, the deer and moose go right across the road. You know what I mean? Like it's just like a zip. In Alberta, not so much. They stand at the side of the highway and tease you. <laughs> I didn't make that up. You're just booting on the highway and you see. So when you see a sign like that, you're like, oh my God, never happens that way. Huh? You see a sign, you're prepared for it, you're looking for it. Nope, doesn't happen. You only see these deer, moose, elk, they have antelope. I'm not even making that up. I thought that was just in a song. It really is where the deer and the antelope play. You never see the wildlife when you're prepared, see a sign like that. No, no, no. You see them at like three in the morning after you've peeled out of McDonald's, you know what I mean? Out of that drive through just burger in one hand, frosty shake in the other, steering with your knees, <laughs> got your fries kind of, <laughs> come with that rise in the Alberta road, what do you see? <laughs> <It's>, uh, uh, <laughs> I was talking before I got into before I got into that. I was talking about how my wife just is a she loves the reality television. That's her big thing. Her favorite show by far, bar none, has got to be Survivor. That's it. That's her number one show. Big fans, yeah. So you're looking at me like your TV only goes to four. She loves it, and I don't know. She tried to get me to watch it. You know what I mean? It makes me angry. One of the reasons Survivor makes me angry is that they play Survivor sometimes in the dead of winter in Canada. Doesn't that make you angry? You know what I mean? You spend like four hours digging your car to a snowbank in the middle of February. Just have the plow plow you back in. Oh, and they know you're there. You know they're sitting up the street. He just dug it out. Let's go. Hey, let's put a giant boulder in front of his driveway. Then you're all upset and cranky and just, argh, argh. you go inside to watch television to escape the winter. Hmm? Yeah. Then you turn it on and you're Survivor, some idiots on a tropical island complaining about their crappy day. Right? Oh, it rained for 20 minutes yesterday. And all we had to eat was fresh coconut and shrimp. I'm just on the phone with a travel agent. Yeah, how much for a plane ticket to Survivor Island? Mm. And do they sell baseball bats and shovels down there? She tried to get me to watch it once. Uh, it was when Survivor was in Africa. Remember that other made-up place they went to? Nobody questioned that at all. Uh, they went to Africa, and my wife said, please, it's my favorite show, watch my favorite show, watch my favorite show with me. And I'm like, fine. And I didn't watch the whole episode, I watched the tail end of the episode, when they tell you what's going to happen next week. And they almost had me, almost grabbed me, right? They said, next week on Survivor Africa, lions encroach the camp. Lions, the king of the jungle. <laughs> that's, that's my lion for you. <laughs> I will never be a mime. It's either a lion or a guy having an epileptic fit. So that's what, then they had me. Then this is where they lost me. They cut to a shot of the lions, and they were like 30 miles away, tiny on the horizon. They could have been stray dogs for all we know. Right? And then they cut to these survivors in their camp. This is their reaction. Oh, my God, lions! Ah! It's a game show. Do you think the network is going to let lions anywhere near these people? Hey. Like you're watching Survivor Home, just ready to change the channel, watching some idiot talk to camera. You're just like, uh, and he's like, I think we're going to try a little harder yesterday. I think what's going to happen now is we're get together as a team. Ah, <laughs> Holy cow, that lion just eat that guy? <laughs> and like, like the other people in this tribe would give a crap, eh? You know, well, we were going to vote Larry off, but... Uh, I don't 
no, man. It just makes me angry. This is the real reason I get angry about Survivor. They don't allow us, Canadians, on Survivor. We're not on Survivor. They don't allow us to be on the show. I think that's crap, but I have a theory why they don't let us on Survivor. Because we camp. <laughs> I, always, I always love that it takes a minute to roll through the audience. Oh, my God, we do. How does he know this? He's a Wiccan. We would rock that show. There's no way they would kick a Canadian off Survivor. We're just too ingenious in the woods. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know in the show, when they take them aside and they talk to them, they're like, so who do you think you're going to vote off? I think Gary, not really a team player, doesn't really help out. The rest of the tribe doesn't like him. He's in real jeopardy being voted off tonight. Mm -hmm. And what about the Canadian? Oh, no, Christ, we're keeping him. <laughs> yeah, he made rye out of coconuts. <laughs> I'll leave you with this because uh, I know, you know, it's starting to turn now. It's starting to turn. The weather's starting to go, right? It's starting to get a little uh, little gross. You know what I'm saying? It's starting to get cold. The sky has now come out. It's cold. Eh? It's getting cold. Huh? It's cold. It's getting cold, eh? It's cold. He's the same idiot that says this at the first snowfall. Where did this come from? You can legally stab him in the throat. You know that, right? I just love that. I have a theory why we as Canadians hate the winter, okay? Just bear with me. It's because we like to drink outside. <laughs> hey? Oh, yeah. How many times, how many times during the brutal winter you guys had last year, did you just stand there with like a drink in your hand, like a beer, looking at a snowstorm, willing the snow to melt? You know? Come on! That's why we have to go away. That's why we have to get the hell out of Dodge at least for a week. You know what I'm saying? Get out of town, go away. Is anybody going away? You going away this winter? Where are you going? Cancun. Oh, hoity toity. I went to Dominican. I'll only go for a week, though. So I'm going to stress this before I go to my public service announcement. Only go to places like Dominican or Cuba for a week, okay? Because uh, those two words, free liquor. We don't handle that well. Even though they've told us about it, we still forget and show up and go, free liquor? Uh, no, that's why you'll never see this in Moncton, a banner over a bar door that says, free liquor. Because you know what that bar would look like the next day? Burn down. <laughs> some, some guy from St. Antoine, mm, this puddle tastes smoky. <laughs> Let me just put it this way. I went to Dominican once with my best friend. My best friend Chuck and I went, went for two weeks, way too long. Too much liquor. I, uh, I remember looking at him about 10 days in saying something like, we got to get out of here. <laughs> I, I'm so hammered I can't even see you. What? I can't even see you. Who's that guy? Here's a, just a tip. Here's a tip. Uh, if you're going to go back to a place you went to with a buddy and had a great time with a buddy and you go back to that place with your wife, don't. Go back with the same attitude. I remember saying to my wife at the airport, we are going to get so hammered shopping and stuff. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks a lot. You're really going to enjoy the show. Take care. Johnny Gardas, ladies and gentlemen. Go back, Johnny. Go back there.